Okay, welcome back to Cowboy Survival. What I want to talk about in this video is the basic toolkit that everyone needs at home to be able to fix things at home. In a, in a situation where everything's broken down, you're not going to necessarily be able to even call a repairman. And, the, and there may not be any repairman around to call. You may not have the, the funds to pay for repairs. You may have to end up doing a lot of the repairs yourselves, much like our pioneer five, forefathers did. And so everybody needs a good toolkit. Now, a couple things I'm not going to have here. I'm not going to have electronic items in this particular toolkit because um, I'm going to assume that I don't have the ability to recharge those. Um, if you have a, a backup generator, you might uh, uh, be able to add some things like flashlights and electric drills and some other things that um, uh, that would be you could recharge to use to make your life easier. We're just going to talk about good old-fashioned manual tools. Now, first thing I think everybody needs is a good hammer. Now, this hammer weighs quite a bit. It's heavy. Go out, try it. Pick up the hammers in your local hardware store and find one that feels good. It feels like when you swing it, it's got some heft. You don't want a light hammer. You want a hammer that when you hit something, it's going to make an impact. And you're going to want to be able to drive nails. This hammer, when I'm going right, I can, you know, set, drive, finish with a nail. Three strokes is all you really need to get a nail in if you've got the right hammer. Don't get one that's too heavy for you, but go out and practice and find a hammer that's got enough heft to it. It's going to make a difference. Um, and it's one that you're going to be able to handle. So... A, a good hammer is your first tool. The second tool group I'm going to talk about is screwdrivers and things that are like screwdrivers. So I've got a whole bunch of types of screwdrivers you're going to need. Um, these are Phillips heads, and you might want to, you may even want to have a smaller one. Um, uh, these are actually these two are about the same size, I think. Um, but get you some Phillips head screwdrivers um, because a lot of screws are Phillips head. You're also going to need flathead screwdrivers. Um, I've got three different types here. I got a nice big one. I like this. This is my favorite screwdriver driver of all time. I can pry paint cans open with it. I can screw most any screws will fit this. Small screws will not. Things like in uh, electrical outlet boxes will not fit that screwdriver. I've got a medium size screwdriver here. And then I've got this little screwdriver. Um, you put in your pocket and it's got a little bitty head on it compared. You can see the difference in those two heads. Um, but uh, having different size flat heads. Also having some mini screwdrivers. These happen to be uh, hex head screwdrivers, but you can buy these from a lot of places, all these mini screwdrivers. Uh, you might even buy a, a, one of the mini jeweler uh, screwdriver sets um, to have because there are a lot of things real tiny, things like glasses and, and taking out the screws on, on a knife or something. Um, so screwdrivers are really good. Another thing is these Allen wrenches, okay? I, those are sort of the screwdriver family, I think. Um, Allen wrenches are interesting, and rather than, I've got a pouch of them. Um, let's see if I can show you the pouch that I've got. So I've got this pouch of, of uh, uh, these, again, they're craftsmen. i got a lot of craftsmen stuff. These these are nice, but you got to dump them out. They get all over the place. You lose them. What I like is these things I got last year, um, and a lot of you have seen these. They're, they're flip outs. They're like multi-tools, right? Um, so you've got, this one's for the standard uh, uh, type of measurements. This one here is for uh, hex or, or excuse me, um, uh, metric types of wrenches. But what's nice about these, and it actually says on it, uh, actually says metric on it right there. <laughs> uh, and this one says SAE. So um, uh, they fold out. You just take the, whichever one you need, you fold it out, and you can either do it like this, you can do it out like this. Um, but the I idea is you can flip out whichever one you need. Um, I've got this one. This one's got uh, 5 64ths, 3 32nds, 7 64ths. And it got a lot. Of, this one's got a real tiny one in here. Um, this, this, uh, uh, five sixty fourths, um, real tiny, <laughs> but, uh, these are really nice and you're not going to lose them. They're not going to go all over the place. They fold right back up really nice little, uh, foldable Allen wrenches. So get you a couple of those. I think they have in your bag. The next thing is going to be pliers or, or wrenches, um, generally. So, uh, first, my favorite plier that I keep in all my toolboxes is this great big, uh, heavy duty plier here. Um, they call, it's called a vice grip. Um, this isn't what I typically think of when I think of vice grips, um, but this one's by Ehrman. Uh, a lot of people make a lot of them. I've got, you know, Craftsman makes them and, and you know, all the other companies make them. Um, get one that's got good, good, comfortable handles on. I've seen some with, it got those uh, uh, sort of a rubbery uh, handle on them. Uh, I don't really 
right like those too much. They don't feel good in my hand, but you might like them. Um, get one that's got a good insulated handle on it because you might be grabbing something. What I like about this, it's got a good broad nose on it. I can get in place. I can grab stuff real up flush. Maybe it's a screw that's really tight or maybe a screw's broken off. I can't unscrew it with a screwdriver. I can grab this. I can clamp down on it and I can pull. These things have tremendous leverage. When I clamp down on this thing, whatever I'm clamped down isn't going anywhere. I can cut with the cutters in this. I can actually cut uh, metal hangers. Um, these things are really powerful. A uh, really big, thick, heavy uh, steel head. Um, these are the type of things that I think everybody should have. Um, I like the eight inch ones. They give me the kind of leverage that I need. You can get them longer. You can get them shorter. I don't think the shorter ones do me much good. Uh, the eight inch is my favorite length. I've actually got another pair of them here. Um, uh, there's another pair that I picked up. I've had for years. I kind of like these better because they're the head's a little broader on it, but uh, these are, this is very helpful. Now, you got to be careful because if you're doing these things and you hold them too close and and this, you got your hand down here and this thing clamps down, it will cut you down here. If you're trying, you know, if you're clamping this thing and it clamps down too tight, you will cut your finger. If your finger's down in here, you'll clamp that and cut that skin really. So you got to be careful with them because they are tight and they will um, clamp onto anything you grab. Now, another type of plier would be a needle nose plier. I think everybody needs a good needle nose plier in their toolkit. It's good for reaching down, grabbing tiny things, doing tiny, very precise work. Um, and sometimes you're gonna need that. Uh, you try to move a wire around, try to grab a wire, whatever. It does have a wire cutter built in, though it's not the best wire cutter on the planet. Um, again, these are also insulated handles because you might be cutting something that's electric and you don't wanna get, uh, get that, um, uh, you don't want to be electrocuted when you cut something. Now, if you're trying to cut small wires, um, like electrical wires in, in, that are in utilities and devices, I've got a pair of these things. I don't know what they call. I all call them dikes, but these aren't really dikes. Um, but they're, they're great wire cutters. Um, you can get these just about anywhere. Again, they're insulated handles. Um, it's got the wire cutters are right in here. Of course, the deeper you get it, the more leverage you get. And then this part right here is, is, is sort of notched. You can put that around your, your wire that's got insulation, cut through the insulation, you feel it when you get to the wire, and then you just strip that out and, and you get a nice stripped end on your wire. So that's really nice and helpful. And depending on the type, the size of wire you're using, you can move this little screw uh, up or down here. And as you move it up, you're gonna get a, a bigger hole. As you move it back, you're gonna get a smaller hole. So yeah, I don't know if you can tell, it's got a small, a very small hole in there. Um, uh, already. So I can clamp down on a wire and I can strip that, uh, the insulation right off that wire. Other types of wrenches I've got, you need a good set of adjustable wrenches, particularly if you're going to work with plumbing. Um, I've got, this comes as a set, this is actually another Craftsman set, uh, it comes with this, it actually comes with two more that are each larger than these. Um, and they can be very, very, very helpful. Uh, anytime you're trying to get nuts off of things, to undo pipes, to undo uh, bolts, these are going to be very, very helpful. Final kind of wrench kind of item is something like this. This is a, what I typically think of as a vice grip. Though this one is kind of small. I've got a bigger one. I like the bigger one better. Um, this is just one I happen to grab. Um, but having this that you can then grab something, let's say it's, it's uh, let's grab this this right here. I can grab this thing, and then when I grab it, I can pull down on this till it's till it tightens down. Um, uh, and I can, once I tighten, I can lock that down and that's not going anywhere. Okay, that's locked and that's not going anywhere and I can mess with it, I can put it into place. Uh, it's, it's nice, I don't have to keep holding it. That's why these are very, very nice, these locking pliers like this. Um, I don't generally like the channel lock pliers. I don't use those very often. Um, uh, boy, that's down on there really tight. Uh, I just, I just never found much use for those. Uh, anytime I'm gonna use those, I just use one of these. Um, these are always much more useful to me. Now, a couple of items that you might wanna add. Uh, the, an essential one you wanna add is gonna be a tape measure. Everybody needs to be able to measure things. So you need that tape measure in your uh, kit. Uh, this is a 16 foot. You can get them all kinds of different uh, lengths. Uh, so, um, you know, 12 foot. I think you don't want anything less than 12 foot. 12 foot's about right. 16 foot, 20 foot is good. Uh, you can get 36 foot. You can get 100 foot tape measures if you want. I think about 16 to 20 feet is a good size. You buy these a lot of times in a set. Um, uh, you get a small one, you get this one, and you get a bigger one. Uh, this is what I've got. So I've got three or four, and I got multiple sets. My wife's got a green set, and that's how she says, you know, and she can tell if, if it's my tape measure or her tape measure. Hers are green, mine are uh, yellow. I, I think they're both Stanleys, um, but uh, she, her, so she's got her own. Another neat thing to have in a toolbox, I think, is a extend, extendable magnet. 
Um, uh, this is a very inexpensive one. Again, it's Craftsman. Um, I don't know why I've got so much Craftsman stuff. My dad was a big Craftsman guy and started me with my tool stuff. So a lot of my tools are Craftsman tools because that's what he started me with, you know, 40 years ago. Um, but this is nice. You extend this out uh, and you get them to go much longer than this. Um, it's got a magnet here on the end and you go pick up things. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's metal, uh, that thing will, will mag magnetize right to it. Um, and you can pick up screws and, and whatnot. Um, if you drop a screw behind a cabinet, um, down inside a wall and you need to grab it, you can see it, but you can't reach it. Right. And that's really frustrating. So a tool like this is very helpful. You just put it in your pocket. Uh, two other things that I think you should always have is a good pocket knife, uh, to cut. Now, some people like the utility knives with the razor blades in them. I prefer a, a pocket knife as opposed to a razor blade, but I get it. Um, razor blades can actually be be useful in some certain circumstances where a knife is not. I just, if I've got to have one, I'm going to take a pocket knife. This, again, is a Craftsman. Um, you've seen other videos where I've talked about these. The newer one of this has got a lock, a slide lock here that you have to push before you can, you have to push the, with your thumb before you can open the blade. Um, what I like about that is that it it's, adds another element of safety. That blade's not going to come open on you by accident in your pocket or anything. Um, uh, you can tell this one, actually, I don't know if you can see it, but around the, around the pocket holder, it's a little worn. This I've used this pocket knife a lot in a lot of circumstances. So that's a great thing to have. The final thing I think everybody should have in their bag is a towel. Um, towels are great for grabbing things, for drying your hands when they get wet or greasy. Um, have a good towel. I've got, I've got a belt hook on mine. Um, uh, and, uh, but, um, having a good towel is going to be very, very useful to you in a lot of circumstances. So what you have there is what I think the basic tools for a, a home toolkit. If you don't have those, I'd go out and start collecting those now. Get your bag. I've got, got one of these bags. I hate to tell you, it's a, it's a craftsman bag again, but get your little bag. Cobalt has a little bag. Matter of fact, uh, I bought one last year, a cobalt bag, um, <coughs> for $10 that I use for my range bag. Um, I throw all my ammo and my targets and my, my uh, magazines. I just throw all that stuff in that rain, in that bag. So for 10 bucks, you can get your bag like that, put your tools in it, and then you're ready to grab and go anywhere. Uh, another thing you might want to add to it is a headlight. Uh, I think for this one, I've got a, um, uh, I got this little uh, Energizer headlight that goes in there. Um, get you a little headlight to, to go in your bag as well. Um, another nice little tool to have. So uh, that's your basic toolbox or toolkit. Now, the next thing we'll talk about in the next video is going to be the kind of support tools, the kind of supplies you need um, to make these tools work, to help these tools to do things. Uh, you know, what are you, what are you turning with these things? What are you pounding with a hammer? What are you pulling? Um, you know, screws, nails, all those kind of things we're going to talk about Um uh, when we talk about other survival tools. So think in terms of uh, what tools would you need to fix things around your house if you didn't have electricity and you couldn't call somebody. Uh, so get those tools, learn how to use them, learn how to deal with uh, change out light switches and, and change out light fixtures, uh, learn how to change a faucet, uh, learn those things and practice those things so that you can do those things yourselves. It'll save you money. Uh, it'll make you more self-reliant. And I think you're really going to enjoy the outcome. So in the meantime, remember what we always say, stay strong, stay prepared, have a blessed day. We'll see you soon right here on Cowboy Survival.